Three, two, one. Yeah. Welcome everybody to the flow with my brother Gabriel. Me and him, we about to flow in this dojo. He's my bro though. We've traveled around the whole world. So today we are going to say some things about the flow to cultivate creativity. Hey, hey, Gabriel, how you doing, bro? How's your flows? Yo. Uh. Uh. I'm doing pretty great. Uh, feeling like a figure eight, like a snake, eating its own tail, like a sailboat in the sap full sail, full mass, just wrong with the wind. I don't even know just where it all begins, but if I take a minute and just pause and realize that it's all good and all the stars are happening in alignment, and I take a deep breath and I find that stillness, and I go from there, and I realize that, yo, I don't compare my experience to his or hers, because I realize every person on this earth is doing their own thing, has their own duty, has their own karma, and their own destiny. Yes, indeed, I believe this is true. And so when I free float for you with my boy Jonathan here on this Zoom meeting, it's because we have something that we would like to impart and share with you. Huh. And I swear it's true. Yo. So let's get into it. Yeah. Let's get into it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Dude, thanks for that, man. Yeah, man. Dude, I, I love I love being able to freestyle flow in different locations around the world. Like I don't know if anybody is doing that. Like I know there's a lot of hip hop artists on this planet. I know there's a lot of people writing poetry. I know there's a lot of collaborations happening, but you don't really see people attempting to freestyle over a similar beat on different frequencies. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. Well, that's kind of what it. What that's kind of what that's kind of what we're doing, man. It's like. We're all trying to, we're all trying to pass this, this, uh, like we're all, yeah, it's like we're all collaborating on this one song. That's like, this whole, that's whole, the whole 21st century ethos that you just like summed up in this kind of like little allegorical moment. It's like, <clears throat> we can collaborate in that way and we can like ride a beat for a second and then pass it, you know, on an email, on a thread to our homie across the seas. And it's like, we can like, work like that it's a wild thing it's like if we live in this time zone where it's like it's like things are not uh dictated by the same rules and laws that they were once dictated by it's like the ability to manifest and actualize things really happens at the speed of uh intention and it's like the fact that we can do like a live broadcast or what have you and immediately our 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 message and our frequency and our vibration is broadcast and 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 at a certain point in time like that was possible but it was controlled by these big like media outlets and whatnot but it's like now it's like literally like we're empowered like you can some some homie in africa can start his own podcast you know with like real simple affordable technologies and like actually be a voice that's it. so that's wild yeah man it's cool and you know that's that's the beautiful thing that I believe about this new modern day, the golden age of our time, this new renaissance where basically we are given all of the tools and technologies to bring to fruition anything that we can conjure up in our consciousness, you know, and, um, and, and we're, we're able to get things done quickly. We're able to con connect with anyone around the world. And so then the question is like, what is it that you want to create? You know? And I think that that's one of the biggest challenges for many people, um, you know, is that we oftentimes have this idea that I need money in order to survive. And then in, once I'm able to survive and meet my needs, then I will pursue more creative endeavors or, cre you know, our, and, and there's this like separation mm -hmm. between survival and creativity or survival and, you know, like survival and flow, uh, survival and scarcity and flow and freedom are on two different mm -hmm. frequencies. But, you know, what I love about you and me is that we're both kind of, even though we're both on these different creative paths we are weaving our creative nature and our creative offerings into our ability to to thrive uh in our in our professional realm as well 
Mm, yeah, absolutely. And um, even in, you know, I mean, because, <clears throat> well, you bring up a really fascinating topic. And, and I think it's alive in a lot of people where it's like a lot of people are doing things that they may or may not feel like inspired to be doing in order to make money. And then they have like their passion project that's like over here. Right. Right. And I do think that maybe not everybody in this life who's like a painter, for example, will, will get to a place where they're necessarily making their full income off of like being a painter. But, and, and, and that is possible, but, and there's still some sort of a relationship between the creative energy that we put out in the world and our, it's like, so I'll put it like this, even if we're not making money directly from our creative endeavors, there's still like the creativity that we do bring to the world is somehow going to like help us feel actualized and enlivened, which is going to feed into what we do do for our creative potential, uh, for our, for our like paycheck until like we kind of bridge that gap. So it's like, if we're doing our art, even if we're not getting paid for it and we're bringing the creative the creativity and aliveness that we're harvesting in that container, that's going to overflow into whatever else we're doing in our lives. And it's just going to make us feel happier. Totally. So, yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. It's interesting. Totally. I feel you, man. And, and I think it's like, you know, it's that whole pathway to mastery, you know, that, that we've talked about before where basically, you know, in the beginning, uh, it's that learning curve of, you know, you're conscious that you're not competent fully to be able to make your, you know, your mm. income or your whole salary on your creative path, but you're, you're aware of it. You see the potential for it. And over a period of time on the pathway to mastery, you mm -hmm. are cr cultivating your craft and you're, you're, you're sharpening your sword and you're sparring mm. and you're working on your basics. And it's because it's what you love to do. And, you know, that's when we get into the flow. You know, one of the fundamentals and foundations of flow is to follow your highest excitement. You know, and so it's like, mm. what is what fills you up? What gets you alive? What creates meaning for your life? And I think that one of the most noble ways to go out of this planet is doing what you love, you know? And, mm. and so if, if we could, you know, put ourselves on the pathway to mastery and acknowledging that there is a future where, you know, we are, um, we've mastered our craft and we're also being acknowledged financially and we're being supported to continue doing what you're doing because you're a master. You know, there is a timeline for that potential. And the question is, are we on that timeline? How do we get on it? How do we stay on it? Right. Yeah, absolutely. And it's important to realize that we get <clears throat> there one moment at a time. Right. And this is something I really love about the work that you do with Sacred Strategy and the Mind Lab and some of what we're going to be getting into at this Vision Quest 2020 event and in and, and the beginning of the year in, in Guatemala, on Lake Atiblan is it's like we're tuning our body like an instrument is the term that you like to use and i really resonate with that <clears throat> to like basically bring ourselves into okay so we're first we're visualizing we're tapping into the endless field of potentialities to visualize a potential future that exists in the future then we're breathing into the version of ourselves that we need to be in every moment between now and the full expression or actualization of that potential reality. Mm -hmm. So it's like, there's this component of like, there's a visualization taking place in this moment that puts us into the future, but then bringing it back through this like series of moments to this present moment and being like, what do we need to be and how can we be the best version of ourselves in this moment, the most aligned, most magnetic version of ourselves, most compatible version of ourselves with that future reality right here, right now. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's what I, I love about this idea of like this flow dojo, because like the flow dojo is always the present moment, right? Like the flow, the Tao, the, you know, it's like, it's always present. 
and 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 but it's the dojo in a sense that we are sparring against our you know our our, our vision of a future present moment versus a past present moment Right. And, and a lot of times we're caught into a past present moment where we're basically living the story of our past in our mind and in our awareness. Mm -hmm. And so we're just and we're, we're stimulating that that neural synaptic network of emotions of our past story rather than the awe and inspiration and the expansion of the potential of our future. Right. So there's this like expanding nature of the future mm. and there is a contracting nature of our past because like the past mm. happened, mm. right? Like mm. it was definitive, mm. it's, you know, full stop, like that's what happened and we're holding on to that. And so in this flow dojo, you're, what you're saying is that you can, yeah, visualize that that future, and then and then what I like what you said is you breathe into it in every present. Mm. Love that. Yeah, that's it, and and I think it's breathing. I love this. Like <clears throat> when when you when you acknowledge somebody for the good work they put into actualizing their craft, and you take a moment to like witness, listen to somebody's song or witness somebody's painting, and you like sit them down and you sit across from them or you even send them a message online. But like, really, you know, if you look them in the eye and just say like, yo, I feel the potency of what you're bringing. I feel altered in a positive way by interacting with that art form that you brought into the world, like something of that nature. What you're, what I see you doing is you're breathing life into that pursuit of mastery. You're breathing life into the version of themselves that, is doing that thing full power and is believing in themselves and it's like i literally see it as like breathing into a fire you know mm -hmm. like when you're when you're stoking a fire like you go, right you know what i mean it's like that's what is happening when you're actually taking a moment to acknowledge somebody and like build build them up in a in a genuine authentic way it's like you're breathing life into their vision and and that's also what we do in vision quest when we do things like you know kind of like the mastermind or what we've called idea sex pods yeah it's like so i have a vision and it can be like this maybe vague flimsy thing but it's like when we take it into a creative space and we're like oh but this part of the vision and it's like and we comment on it and we make a commentary on like oh and i see this it's like we start to actually fortify and build we're, what we're doing is we're actually like building and fleshing out a blueprint and like creating a, a, a like even a stronger. Yeah. Like, like it's like, we're building that the palace of that reality, like in the, the, the intellect and in like the sphere of the possibility together. Yeah. And it somehow makes it realer, even if it's not real yet. It's like so you're true. making it realer on its path to its actual actualization, right? That's so it's like, it. If, if, like I know a couple of people who've done re retreat centers, right? Like made retreat centers. And it's like that started and really anything in your house you can look at. And it's like that, like all the books on your bookshelf behind you, like all that started with somebody like, oh, I'm going to write a book, you know, or the right, house that right, was right. built or the shelves that were built. It's like that all started with a pre, a preality right the reality <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. with a dream seed you know totally that was then cultivated i love that yeah and you know just going back to what you're saying about um the idea of sex pods and you know the mastermind that we're going to be doing in guatemala you know one of the powerful things that happens in those conversations is that you know let's say that you come and it's your turn you get to have a team of people brainstorming with you on your idea for a duration of time and everyone's going to be teaming up and dreaming up for your future and and during that time it's like you come in and you say well here's my dream and i i, I want this and i want that and you kind of like do the shopping list thing and as you're speaking that somebody in your group catches, well, hey, you could, you know, you could do this. And, and you might say, well, no, because da, 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 da. And then, then they say, well, actually, I know that you can do it this way because of experience. And suddenly mm. their reality influences your own reality of what's possible. And I think that oftentimes we get caught into the trap of thinking that we know everything. Mm. Um, we, you know, we get, we, we get clouded by our own belief right. and our yeah. own lack of, of, of research and, and our own. Totally. Yeah. And so, so I think that um, 
having a team then of people dreaming with you for the duration of time, you know, and, and starting to, yeah, as you talked about, like three dimensionalizing this, this experience and, and people are talking about it. And as we're talking about, we're speaking it into an existence and, and it just becomes more real. And then you have momentum. And that's why these creative containers and these incubators for ideas can be, you know, like an activator for more flow because then you get into alignment you feel new energy you feel meaning you are in alignment with your creative endeavors and off you go mm, absolutely there's several things that come up in this what you just shared one is that the the, the realm of the in, of the innovator is the realm of the not yet manifest i mean like somebody who like most or a number of innovations were all considered like crazy at some point in time, like the invention of the airplane, you know what I mean? It's like this, these people had tuned into a reality that like they knew could exist, <clears throat> though there was no precedent for it aside from like birds, right? But like there was no precedent for the fact that human beings could create a machine that would allow us to fly, right? But they intuited that the possibility existed. And they were bold enough to like exist in the in that in that intuitive sense of what could be, even though it had yet not actualized, right? So that's like super important to like be able to like, <clears throat> yeah, we have this term like realism, and like I think it is we do in a sense, you know, exist on a planet of like finite resources, and that like you know, it's like if you have a if you have a a jug of water on a table you know it's like once you pour out the jug of water there's there's no more water in that jug you know but there's like there's also that that's so that's one element of like reality there's finite resources and then there's another layer of like there's water everywhere in our ecology and there's water in the air and there's water so it's like though though there's only a certain amount of water like in that jug in that moment there's also like in a, in a sense, like this limitless amount of water that's just not there in that present moment. So it's like this life is this combination of being practically oriented and rational while simultaneously realizing that there is like this infinite quality to life that's also equally present, right? Yes. It's right. The unknown. It's so true. And, and when we're waking up on the same side of the bed every day and when we're you know like driving the same direction to work and when we get caught into a routine it's good right. because it's it's good but it also can cause us to get neurologically caught into a, rut a routine where we get stuck in certain programs and 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 potentially um limiting beliefs which you know uh, bruce lipton talks about how the average person 70 percent of their beliefs are limiting and self-defeating and mm. this is part of our responsibility as um, conscious beings who are on the cutting edge of the awakening of consciousness on our planet in this age of, of human evolution, which we are still evolving as humanity. We didn't stop. We're still evolving. And, and the task at hand is to wake up over and over again and become aware of how connected we are to source and that we are infinite in nature, which is exactly what you're talking about. And so if we get caught into the trap of, you know, a certain program or pattern in, in our environment, Environment has shaped us into becoming a certain version of ourselves that maybe is a reflection of our past, but we have an innate sense or feeling that there's something bigger that wants to emerge. Maybe it's designing an airplane, maybe it's a new business, maybe it's you know any creative endeavor. Yeah. Um, I believe that that doing things that can get you into the flow will help you to break free from those old patterns. And one of the best ones is traveling and exploring mm. new lands going to novel environments and places that mm. open up your mind and, and and literally shatter all of your old environmental cues right because now mm. you're in a new environment and you're in these containers or in these spaces of creativity and inspiration and so something to think about but i'm curious gabriel what are some of the things because you have recently been doing this experiment a flow experiment where you are writing a new song every 48 hours um a new hip-hop song you're a conscious hip-hop artist 
um, and you're you've been working with Beats, but like you've got people that are supporting with you with Beats as well. And I'm just curious, like, what has that experience been like to produce a song every 48 hours? And how mm. how did you get into that state of flow? And what's that been like for you? Yeah. So I'd love to speak to that. And first, I just want to touch really briefly on a couple of things that you just said. So what 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 I love about what you were just sharing was I heard represented equally in what you were just sharing is like, well, and, and this ties to what you just asked me. So yeah. you're talking about how when you lay a certain groove or a foundation, waking, waking up on the same side of the bed, doing the same X, Y, Z, <clears throat> you kind of can, can find yourself in a rut. And so there's a certain need for a pattern interrupt, which you said, you know, it's like traveling is one pattern interrupt or like putting yourself in a situation you normally wouldn't put yourself is, is a pattern interrupt, right? right? So this is a huge like catalyst to, to breakthroughs. I totally agree with that 100 million percent. And then to bridge into the question you just asked me, there's also this element of um, laying grooves is necessary. So like for me, I created a track and a framework and a geometry in order to be prolific as an artist, which was I will put a really hard like structure. This is like the dojo. This is where the flow meets dojo, right? So it's like I created like I'm going to put a song on the internet every 48 hours. <clears throat> and what that does is that creates, you start to create, you, you need to make, so we're, we're at 70% water or, you know, something like that. And uh, so as such, we kind of follow the path of least resistance. And so what that means for us, yes, yeah, staying hydrated like that. <laughs> so what that means is that we need to actually set up a groove or, or a synaptic network or a physical geometry that supports and endorses a certain lifestyle. So we need to make it easy for ourselves to do the things that are important. Nice. And we need to like, so that's what the framework was for the song challenge. This creation challenge was like, simple as that. Let me like create a framework that makes it like, I have this inherent gift, this flow that's like, can just be like this amorphous bleh, liquid thing, which is my creative charge and my juice. But unless I find a particular manner uh, of a way to cultivate it in a regular rhythmic fashion it, it it could just stay in that endless churning creative flow right so this is the balance yeah nice love that and and how was it like um what in the beginning you know you you're like okay i'm gonna go from not creating a song you know maybe a song every couple weeks to like right i'm gonna do one every right. other day and and what was that like for you was it yeah yeah what was that like yeah so it was like super rewarding because i feel like i had kind of had this like stockpile of material and and like inspiration that i was like sitting on and um so it felt really good and it was also it was challenging i mean that's why i called it like a challenge that's what it was was like there were nights where i wasn't going to sleep until man a couple of days i didn't go to sleep until like the next day at like 9 or 10 a.m even like wow because i was just like it was this example of like amazing i had i i just it was commitment it was and so this is part of it right it's like there's there's certain ways in which we need to there like that that flow just happens when it happens and the muse comes when it comes but there are ways that we attract the muse and there are ways that we like really uh work with the muse and be like hey muse i get that you have like sometimes a bit of a like a, a fickle nature or like a you just kind of come in, and sh but it's like, I really want to just like, I would love it if you just sit down with me mm. and like work, you know? And sometimes the muse like responds to that. Sometimes our creativity and it's like, and it was this whole, it was this whole perseverance. It was almost like a, a, a it was almost like a rite of passage for me in a way, because like there were moments when I was like super late night delirious. And I was like, I didn't want, that's not what I wanted to be doing. But if I, but it yielded a, a fruit, right? 
Yeah. Like it, it was that leaning into that edge of like, there are initiatory processes and in basically any culture around the world that require a certain leaning into of an edge, a certain, you know, like tribal cultures that tattoo their, their, their young initiatory males or, or females in Africa that like for like days on end, you're like tattooing like their whole body and like, you can't, you're not allowed to like res respond in like a, a, like a flinching crying. Ma it's like, you have to just be Zen. And it's like through that initiatory process, you come through and you're like that higher octave of yourself. Right. 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 Or so like, it was it's almost like, like I put myself. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's it. Right. That's it. That's it. That's it. You fast. Right. Yeah. yeah. You fast. And, 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 what happens when you're at the end of that fast, you, you realize that you've expanded your capacity. Wow. Right. Wow. That's amazing, man. Hearing, hearing you say that just gets me so inspired because I know that, you know, this is something that you have been calling in for a long time and, and, you know, we've known each other for years and, and I've witnessed your creative capabilities as a uh, flow ninja and your capacity to you know like your poetry and like everything that you've written is is very well done but to hear you you know push and lean into that end mm. as you say um is is amazing because it, it even reminds me of when i published my first two books and I was, you know, I, I decided that I was going to write a book and, and I created a sacred container in my space at my house in Hawaii. Mm. And I said, from this moment forward, I said, I'm on an, uh, uh, an author retreat. And that's what I turned my life into an author retreat. And I see you in the yeah. same, like nice. you're in studio, you know, and, and, and yeah. so I created that container and that group. And I said, I'm going to write it between this time and this time. I've got two hours every day or three hours every day that I need to be writing or editing or whatever I need to do. And, and setting that, that container. Yeah. It caused me, I was up late at night. I was making coffee early in the morning. You know, it was just like, and, and, and you, you break through the old program by downloading and inciting a new program. And so, um, yeah, I feel like, uh, what we are creating with the vision quest is a container mm -hmm. and a space for you to create that new program for all of us to create the new program mm -hmm. for 2020 which you know the 2020 vision it's that perfect vision of your future which we all have the birthright to experience our perfect mm -hmm. 2020 vision you know it, it is it is innately within us to be able to bring that forth in this lifetime and in this year you know and similar to what we do in a you know setting new year's goals this is going to be like that to the next level because we're mm. going to be, you know, bringing to this platform more than just our goals, but rather, you know, what have, what has been the things that have prevented us from achieving them so far and, and, and exchanging skills and mindsets and, and best practices in order to stay in alignment. And so for anyone that's out there that feels compelled to make that leap into that next level version of your mission and, you're offering to the world and what you're you know what you're being called to create we're calling you to come and join us in guatemala mm. for this creative endeavor for all of us to share mm. with each other our visions our goals our dreams mm. and to support one another in getting crystal clear on how we're going to bring that into the world and uh, gabriel's going to mm. be there he's going to be facilitating a freestyle and flow workshop which is a profound experience. It's something that's very important for all of us to understand how to uh, cultivate flow in our linguistic capacity so that as we navigate through experiences in the workplace, in relationships, um, in you know, your videos that you create to market your business and whatever it is that you're doing, or even just in expressing yourself poetically, the more mm. that you can cultivate the skill gives you the 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 dialect and the the capacity to articulate your wildest dreams and you can have a big vision but if you can't communicate it mm -hmm. you know then there is that blockage mm -hmm. so i'm i'm excited right. to once again experience your workshop gabe because i've done it yeah it's, it's it's profound and it yeah 
it, it yeah. a lot of excitement in the space. Yeah, yeah, man. And I'll just say that it is <clears throat> part of why we bring it is because it is a microcosm of exactly what we're doing in the workshop in an embodied momentary practice because it's going from uh, divergent thinking to like you could say anything right now. So just allowing yourself to feel the beat and like tune into that. Anything could come out. Then a thought comes and you commit and you actualize that thought in a moment's notice. So it is the process of opening, feeling that thought come, crystallize, and birthing that thought in a moment's notice. It's like this is the process of <clears throat> opening to the field of infinite potentials and actualizing from that field in a split second. And that is actually the practice that we're stepping into through embodiment and voice. Yeah. And um, I just want to say briefly, like, in regards to what, you know, Vision Quest means to me, like, when uh, Vision Quest 2020, this event is like, there are moments when we have the opportunity to kind of communicate to the universe through like a tangible investment in ourselves, like that we are devoted to actualizing ourselves, right? And there are a lot of ways we can do this. You don't necessarily have to come to Vision Quest to do this. Hopefully, you're doing this in some way or another in your life but this is a beautiful way to do that it's like you put your money where your mouth is you show up you do the practices you enter the group field you do the work and and you're and you're telling yourself you're telling your community you know what i mean it's like when you tell people oh yeah i'm going to guatemala for this event because i care about investing in my business and my vision and like what i'm here to bring into the world your community hears you saying that you hear you saying that to yourself mm. the universe hears you saying that it's like this is this is the you know it's like we enter through the portal and the financial investment and the investment of time and energy is just like everything requires a sacrifice a give and take of of, of, of time and energy and investment and like the beauty that comes from when we consciously invest and devote into ourselves and into our community and into our service it's like that's heard that's felt by the people around us when we take that stand to show up for ourselves uh -huh. uh, in our art and our craft. So that's kind of like what this event is about for me and events like this are like, are you willing to actually put in the work? Mm. Um, and that's not to say it's not going to be juicy and pleasurable because it, because it is. And, and we often at times have this like false dichotomy about, putting in the work like i got a sick kick out of staying up until 6 a.m working on these songs even though there were moments where i was my brain was fried you know what i mean it's like there is a beauty when we lean into this and and there is a juice to it you know so it's not an entirely selfless act of martyrdom you know it actually is a higher octave of pleasure that we can step into when we're devoted to ourselves in this way beautiful man thank you for sharing that yeah, and I, I feel I feel a deep resonance with just the commitment that you're making right now in your art and your craft. And it speaks to me because, you know, I, I go in and out of way of of extreme commitment, right? Like where you're just diving diving in deep into creation. <laughs> and and um and and seeing you in it inspires me to be like, hey time to level up, you know, and I, and I, and I'm there, you know, and I've been there actually, and it's been coinciding with your, mm. you know, creative commitment. And so, um, you know, building that network, building that, you know, that, that international community of people who are also on that same wave. And you're like, Whoa, this person's doing this. And, and I feel their energy and I'm surrounded by these people who are, you know, creating in new ways that I've never seen or thought of before and and then how that activates us to see ourselves in a bigger way and um and that's that's why I really love just you know creating these um events for all of us to come and level up together you know because um as you know there's a lot of shit that's happening on our planet and we need people to um create solutions and entrepreneurial ventures that are solving the real problems that we're having on our planet because mm -hmm. the businesses of the future that replace the old system are being started today, 
by people like mm -hmm. us who decide that you know what fuck this. i don't want to see the you know the pillaging of our environment for capitalistic gain happening anymore so i'm going to develop mm. a sustainable initiative or whatever it may be mm. um and so that is uh, also the intention of this is to activate conscious entrepreneurs and game changing leaders to step up mm. and to empower and initiate ourselves and so mm. like you said when we show up that is the self-initiation but then it, with the community the container that we create that is the community initiation where we all rise up together and um yeah man this video has been an initiation in itself we've been trying to go live like for, for like a couple days and not letting us go live it's, together. you know it's the universe asking you how how bad you want it that's it that that's is it you know it. and and here's here's a funny thing with the flow with the catch 22 of like flow it's like we have this thing of like flow should be easy right but it's like well, is that true, right? It's like, because the, the word can be a little deceptive, but it's like, it's like, there are certain things in life that you, you have to, it's right after you make that final push that things really actualize. That's it. And do the thing, you know? <laughs> We did it. <laughs> we, we, we did it against all odds. <laughs> how many we we tried to go Facebook Live. I can't even tell you guys how, how many we tried to go live and uh, it just kept not happening. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go live either way, universe, because we want this thing to happen. We're gonna post this video no matter what. You know, it's gonna get posted, but it's been it's been facing this way, recording the screen, so just so you know. Oh wait, has this been live too? The whole time, yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that. <laughs> that's fun. That's it's cool. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. that. Nice. That's a good vibe. Yeah. So good I feel like we should, uh, we should wrap yeah, it up wrap here that up. and uh, yeah, put a bow on top. You know. <laughs> and uh, Gabriel, man, thank you so much for uh, making <laughs> this shift happen and and tapping into the flow with me once again in this flow dojo. Chuck. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, man. You know it, bro. It's like that's that's what we're here to do, man. We're here to how good can it get? And how quick push can it get that good. Push that limit, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, thanks for thanks for having me on, bro. Yeah. Appreciate it. Love you, brother. Love you too, man. Cool. Excited to see you in Guatemala. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy uh Africa. Oh, yeah. Thanks, they man. Hide, they hide your dad for me. That's cool. Oh, appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See you guys. Thanks, bro. Catch you in the flow. Much love. Peace. Peace.